whisper. You girls that can't mess your hair up because, you know, you got Sammy over here looking at you. Forget about Sammy. Huh? He's always looking. He'll be looking tomorrow night. So just go ahead and, and get on in and uh, let God help you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 12 tonight. Oh, chapter number 13. <coughs> And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. He went on his journey from the south even to Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai under the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also which went with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. There was strife between the herdmen of Abram Abram's cattle and the Hermon of Lot's cattle and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Lot lifted up his eyes. And beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Heavenly Father, help me to preach tonight, God, on this first night at youth camp. We've only got five nights, Lord, and we don't have any time to waste. God, I need you tonight. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. I need your power to overshadow me tonight. I need, God, the power of the Holy Ghost to anoint this congregation's ears to hear that these young people's lives would be stirred. And God, Lord, that you deal with their hearts tonight. Help me to say it just right, that the youngest would understand, that the oldest would comprehend, God, and that most of all that the altars would be filled with weeping young people as they dedicate their lives to You. God, we beg You to help us in this service tonight. We'll give You the praise, the honor, and the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Lot, the Bible said he lifted up his eyes after that him and Abraham had had some trouble between their herdsmen. And they looked out and Lot said, let's, let's not fight. We've got plenty of land. You pick you some and I'll pick me some and, and I'll give you first choice and we'll have us, uh, you take, I'll take what's left. So Abraham, Lot, the Bible said that he lifted up his eyes and he beheld all the plain of Jordan. And it was beautiful. It was well watered. Now, if you're going to raise cattle, you've got to have water. And you've got to have grass. And, and he looked out and he thought about his sheep and his, and his cattle, whatever he had. And he, and he saw the well watered plains. And he, and he saw money. And he saw his herds growing. And he, and he saw profit in the future if he chose the well watered plains. Now, it was common knowledge that there was a place just on the other side of uh, called Sodom and Gomorrah. It was filled with homosexuality. It was filled with perversion and wickedness. The Bible said 
the men of Sodom and Gomorrah were wicked before the Lord exceedingly. I'm talking about they were wicked beyond your wildest imaginations. Uh, wicked and vile. But you know, Saul, uh, Lot just looked out and he, he only saw the well-watered plains. Uh, uh, but if he'd have looked just a little bit farther, uh, he would have saw Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, he would have saw that it was a step in the wrong direction. Uh, I felt God burning my heart to preach to you this first night of youth camp uh, on looking a little farther. Uh, looking a little farther. Uh, you see, the devil is the master of having us just look at the here and the now. Uh, and what pleases us now and what feels good now. Uh, you see, as young people, we're caught up in the moment. Uh, as young people, we want to do what's, what's, uh, what makes us happy now. We're full of zeal. We're full of excitement. Uh, we're not worried about bills. Dad pays the bills. Uh, we're not worried about consequences. Uh, uh, somehow mom and dad's going to take care of all of that. Uh, amen. But I'm going to tell you, every last one of you uh, are making decisions tonight. Uh, and will make decisions uh, in your teenage years uh, that will affect you for all eternity. Uh, you're making decisions now uh, that will have eternal consequences. Uh, that's why it's so important uh, that you look uh, just a little bit farther. You are making choices right now that will forever shape your character right now. But you see, you know, life as a young person is not supposed to be complicated. It's not supposed to be uh, uh, full of complications. And, and, you know, it's supposed to be fun and enjoyable and, and have a good time. But if you're not careful, you'll get so caught up in just having a good time that you forget a very crucial element, and that is called your soul. Uh, hey, man, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you say, Brother Marquis, this is just youth camp. Uh, if I don't get the this year, I might come back next year. Uh, you don't know what will happen between this year and next year. Uh, that's why you must choose now. Uh, that's why you must think about the future now. Uh, amen. You've got to look a little farther. Uh, you've got to look down the road. Uh, you've got to think about tomorrow. Uh, today. Uh, amen. You see, you 16, 17 year olds that's here tonight. You say, well, I'm just flirting. I'm just, you know, I'm just, you're talking. Yeah, but what you don't realize uh, is that everybody that ever got married just started out talking somewhere. Well, we're just friends. You know, yeah, the, everybody that ever got married just started out being friends. Uh, and what happens is the devil wants you to get your eyes uh, on the wrong boy. Uh, and young men, he wants you to get your eyes on the wrong girl. Uh, oh, you're just, just friends. Uh, but if you're not careful, you won't look a little farther. Uh, and think about the complications down the road uh, when you've done fell in love with an old sinner boy. Uh, and find yourself hooked up to some sinner. Uh, you can't afford to even be friends. Uh, you can't afford to even talk to someone who's not saved. Oh, you've got to learn to look a little farther, amen. Woo! Oh, Brother Marky, I'll wait till I'm older. I'll wait till I'm older to get more serious about God. No, 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 no. You've got to think about it now. Career choices have been made, Brother Spinago. People have chosen careers and, and paths and lives with no thought of how it would affect their spiritual soul. Uh, amen, brother. Uh, uh, Sister Peretic said tonight, uh, amen, you know what? You think, well, I'm too young to think about Bible school. Uh, but what she said was so true. Uh, if you don't think about it now, uh, you'll get caught up in a job, in a career, uh, in money, in cars. Uh, and you'll forget that God wants some of your life. Uh, God wants part of your life. Uh, no, God doesn't want part. God wants all of you. Uh, amen. You say I'm too young. No. Uh, you're never too young uh, to start looking ahead uh, and saying, God, what do you want for me in the future? Uh, God, what do you want for my life? Uh, you've got to learn to lack uh, a little farther. Amen. Oh, God. Help us to look a little farther. Here, give me just a minute or two more. Tonight, I want to tell you something, Sister Kerry Kelly. When Lot chose the well-watered plains, he never pictured himself living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was raised with Abraham. Huh? 
Oh, Brother Matt, he was raised in the presence of one of the most godly men that ever walked. Uh, amen. He saw Abraham pray. Uh, he felt God's presence when he was around Abraham. Uh, he knew the power of God. Uh, but when he made one wrong decision, uh, when he refused, when he failed to look a little farther, uh, it cost him a whole awful lot. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're raised in church. Uh, it doesn't matter if your daddy's a preacher. Uh, it don't matter if you've come to this youth camp all your life. Uh, amen. You can be affected by sin. Just the same as the next one. It doesn't matter who you are or where you came from. Sin is no respecter of persons. The devil is no respecter of persons. You've got to learn to look just a little farther. Lot never saw himself. Lot never saw himself living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot never saw his children being exposed to such filth and to such trash. Now, this is very important to me. You listen to young people. You listen to me. Especially those of you that have been raised in church. You have been sheltered from the world. Thank God. And to think of yourself in a wicked, sinful condition. You can't fathom that. You can't imagine yourself strung on drugs or alcohol. You can't imagine that because you've been raised in church. But the problem is when you don't look farther down the road, just one wrong decision can start you on a course that will lead you to so far from God that you will wonder how in the world did I ever get out of here. Just one wrong move, one wrong decision, one wrong turn in your life, one mistake can cost you so much more than you want to pay. Just one decision. I'm looking at the well-watered plains. Just one decision. I'm just looking. I'm thinking of profit. I know, but you've got to think of more than money, Lot. What about those girls you got? What about your family and your wife? And I'm going to tell you, in the end, Lot lost his wife. She became a pillar of salt. Uh, amen. And his girls become filthy, vile, wicked, evil persons. Uh, amen. They're so filthy they've done things that we can't discuss in a youth camp. Uh, but it would have never happened uh, if Lot would have just looked a little farther by the chain. Uh, I said it would have never happened uh, if Lot would have just looked uh, just a little bit farther. Amen. Hey man, uh, I said if Lot would have looked uh, just a little bit farther, it would have never have happened. Hey man, Young men, uh, hey man, the devil, the devil wants to make it look cool. Uh, 
just one puff, uh, just one, uh, just smoke one. Uh, you need, you know, you need to just try. Uh, everybody can smoke one. You, how you don't know unless you try. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you tonight. Uh, I like what Brother Lord Shoecraft said. Uh, you know, you know, you see the advertisement for Marlboro Country. Uh, y'all wanna know where Marlboro Country is? Uh, I'll tell you where it's at. Uh, it's down the cancer ward uh, at the local hospital. Uh, that's Marlboro Country. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you tonight if you're not careful. Uh, the devil, uh, amen, will ruin your life. Uh, I said the devil will destroy your life. Uh, don't ever smoke the first one. Uh, don't ever put the first one in your mouth. Uh, and just in case, uh, you're here tonight. Uh, there's a young man in this place tonight. Uh, you're hooked on those cigarettes as I was preaching. Uh, you better beg God to set you free. Uh, you better look a little farther. Uh, it's going to be destruction. Uh, it's going to be your doom. Uh, my God, look. Uh, just a little farther. Just one. Just one, that's all. But one leads to two. And everybody of the millions that have addicted tonight and the millions that are dying tonight, it all started with just one. Somebody didn't look a little far. Hold on, Ryan. Why can't I do that? I, hold on. Why can't I have a good time? Bring his mind. Why can't I do that? Well, Ryan, I'm going to tell you. I know. No, don't. Hey, Brian, don't take that now. You know, be careful. I'm going to tell you why. You kind of need it. You need to, you need to look. No, I, I know it looks good now and make you fit in. I know, but, but, but Ryan, why don't you look a little farther? Look a little farther down the road. Huh? Look. Oh, no. Uh, see what happens, right? Ryan, you better throw that down. You don't want that. You don't want that. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All across the United States of America tonight, there are women being beaten. Uh, amen. Because daddy drank all the money away. Oh, this is not a game tonight. Uh, this is not just a skit. Uh, it's for real. Uh, you hear me tonight? Uh, it's, oh, just one little drink, Brother Marquis. Uh, I'll never go that far. Uh, I'll never go. Yes, you will. Uh, because you can't stop uh, when sin gets a hold of you. Uh, you'll go farther than you want to go. Uh, it'll keep you longer uh, than you want to stay. Uh, and it will always cost you more than you want to pay. Oh! You hear me tonight, boys? I'm preaching to you mostly right here and right now. I don't care if you've been raised in church all your life. Uh, you will face the same temptations. Uh, and that you hold, hold it right now. Hold it right there. I believe that right here tonight amongst these boys, I could pick out, I could pick out a boy right in this place tonight. Who could tell you about a drunk daddy right in this place tonight? I could pick out a girl that could tell you about a drunk daddy that beats mama. I'm not playing games tonight. I'm going to tell you, you better learn to look a little far. But old brother Marky, I want to be cool. I want to fit in. I, I don't want to be an outcast. I don't want to be a misfit. But I'm going to tell you something. Oh, listen to brother Brent tonight. Please, please, please. Don't ever taste the first sip. You don't have to even try. You're looking at a boy tonight. That don't even know what it hardly smells like. You don't have to try it. Look a little farther. Look a little farther. Look a little bit farther. Father, down the road, amen. Pause that tape just a minute, brother. Hey, man, you know how that... And it will rob you of everything you've got. You better wise up. And you better look a little farther. I said you better look a little bit farther. 
I personally, Brother Larry Hoover, have met men who have lost homes and cars and wives and children and everything they have to gambling and they still can't stop. You know why? Because hell drives them on. Satan drives them on. You know when it all started? It all started with one little lottery ticket somewhere. It started with a dollar. Then it went to two, Brother Krauss. Then it went to five. Amen. And now that's their whole paycheck. And they're always planning on hitting it big next week. You better wise up. You better wake up, young people, and say, God, I give you my life. I'll look a little farther. I don't want anybody. Hallelujah. 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 What we got here? Needles in his arms. Needles. Look, look, he's losing his mind. He can't even count. He can he can you count? Can you count to even count to ten? Listen, he can't even count, Ryan. Hold on. Drugs. No. No. He's, sh- he's shaking. He's trembling all over. Ryan, I, you better look a little. Hold on, Ryan. Look just a little bit farther. Look, look here coming. What do we got? Look a little bit farther. Oh, no. Oh, look at a crying mama. Look at a crying mama. Look right there, right? Now, see, the coolness is gone. Listen, listen. Leave your mama crying. You don't want to. Don't run. Don't take that. Oh, oh, don't leave mama crying. Oh, tonight, 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 Brother Matt Jones, there's a mama at a viewing somewhere tonight for a little boy who lost it. Tonight. Tonight, while we're at youth camp, son, having a good time. A little boy your age is smoking a first joint of marijuana. Tonight, while you're here, and some of you here have already tried it. You're not hooked on acid and hard stuff, but some of you tonight have already experimented with drugs in this place at night. I'm going to tell you what you're going to end up with. You're going to end up with a prison sentence. You're going to end up with a crying mama. You're going to end up with a broken heart. You're going to end up with a blowed mind. Oh, my God of heaven. I'm telling you better look a little farther. I said, I'm telling you better look a little farther. You better wake up tonight. You better pinch yourself and realize that the devil's playing for keeps. And you better Look a little farther. Oh, oh, listen to me tonight. I wish Sister Betty Mills was here. Because you see, Sister Betty Mills uh, have got two brothers tonight in the penitentiary uh, that started out with a little puff of marijuana. Amen. But have got 10 year mandatory prison sentences tonight. Uh, oh, my God of heaven. Uh, she's got a brother, one of them that's in prison. Uh, I was there the night he tried to commit suicide out of his mind uh, as he stabbed himself in the wrist over and over and over and over. Uh, and then tried to burn his bloody clothes in the oven. Uh, I was there that night. Uh, I saw it happen. Uh, 
I'm going to tell you tonight it all started when somebody put their first puff just to be cool, just to try it, just to fit out. They didn't have enough sense to lock a little father. Oh, God. Come here, Brother Thomas. Come here, Brother Thomas. Oh, listen to me. Just a couple weeks ago, I bought a boat. Hey, man, me and my brother and dad bought an old boat off a man who lost his little girl that Thomas knew. Do you know her, Thomas? Huh? They're not sure if she committed suicide or overdosed on drugs accidentally. How old was she, Thomas? 20 years old. She come to she went to Mission Tabernacle Church three or four times. Brother Thomas invited her just before she did it. But we don't know what she just accidentally overdosed or committed suicide. But I oh God of heaven. A little twenty year old girl that went to hold his church is in hell tonight because she one day just wanted to fit in. She wanted to be part of the crowd. She was too cool to serve God. She had an opportunity like you do tonight. She said in a holiness church in her the gospel uh, like you are tonight uh, but she made a decision that night uh, that she would do her own thing uh, that she would go her own way uh, and I can promise you this uh, she had no plans uh, of being in hell uh, at 20 years old uh, she had no plans uh, of leaving a crying daddy uh, and a crying mama at 20 years old uh, she just didn't look a little farther She just didn't look a little farther. I've got one more thing I need to talk about tonight, and I'm fixing to close. Something that you boys are struggling with right now. And it's an evil thing that the world is full of. It's called pornography. And I want to tell you tonight that the world is hooked. The world is hooked and addicted to pornography. And it all starts as you flip through the catalog of a Sears and Roebuck magazine. Come on. You go to the wrong section. Oh, Brother Marquis, that ain't nothing. But that's all where it starts. Right. And it just gradually goes downhill from there. Right. Until you are left with a chain wrapped around you that will forever haunt you. Unless God delivers you and has mercy upon your soul. It will cost you thousands and billions of dollars. Thousands and thousands of dollars. And billions of tears. And many, many times you'll wish you never seen the first look. You never took the first glance. Now don't you look at me like I've lost my mind. Uh, because I'm telling you, I'm preaching to boys here tonight. Uh, amen. Who are in that age of discouragement uh, and fear and trouble. Uh, amen. A temptation like, uh, amen, some of you are too old to even remember. Uh, but I, uh, amen, I'm not so old that I cannot remember the temptation uh, and the pull of the world. Uh, but it will leave you broken. Uh, it will leave you empty. Uh, it will leave you locked in. Uh, you need to look on our own father. We're going to look a little farther tonight. Let's look down the road again. What do we see, Ryan? He's a loner. He's just a loner. All he does is talk about Jesus all the time. But he, but he looks happy. Looks like he's got peace. Looks like he, he probably got some friends at church. Looks like he's got joy. Look, looks like he's happy. But let's look a little farther. What do you see now? Let's look down the road. Uh, let's look down the road 15 years. Oh, look, Ryan. I see a preacher. Uh, I see a preacher with a wife. I see a pastor. Uh, amen. I see someone that's still full of joy. Uh, I see a good marriage. Uh, I see a good home. Uh, I see a good life. Uh, I see the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I think this is what you need, Ryan. Uh, you need to choose the Lord. Uh, don't choose those others. Uh, don't you Choose God. Oh, come on, I'm so tired. I think I know what I'm going to choose tonight. I'm going to look a little farther. I'm going to look down the road. I'm going to see what God will do in my life. Why don't you look a little farther? Woo! 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 Woo!
مرتبہ ہوتا ہے I'm fixing to close tonight. And I'm going to tell this. Stay with me. I want you to listen to Brother Brent tonight. Brother Brent is going to tell you a little bit about where he come from. You see, my dad was raised in a homeless church along with a brother and two sisters. My mama and papa raised him in church. But about the age when my dad was around 17 or 18, My mama and papa decided they would leave a little homeless church for a little bit bigger church that was a little more loose, a little more uptown. And so they did. My, brother, my uncle and my two aunts went with them. But my dad made a choice that night about 28 years ago that he was going to stay there at the old little homeless church and just stay right there where he felt God. Well... Now the first year or two didn't look too good. Uh, they went on and prospered and things was looking good. Uh, my sister aunts got married and had money and jobs. Uh, and dad struck out evangelizing. Uh, in an old car station wagon that backfired. Uh, it didn't look like a very good deal at the time. Uh, but we're going to look a little farther tonight, Brother Burroughs. Uh, after about 10 or 15 years, uh, let me tell you that one of those aunts and uncles, uh, their home split up uh, and left a little girl in a split home. Uh, amen. Oh, uh, you know what's even staring at. Uh, my uncle got out of church. Uh, his Brian's dad. His marriage was on the rocks. Uh, amen. My other aunt and uncle got crossways with the family. Uh, amen. If her aunt didn't speak to anybody for 10 years. Uh, meanwhile, dad's pastor in a church. Uh, he's got three children in church. Uh, oh, but it gets sadder than that. Uh, after 35 years of marriage, my grandma and my grandpa split up. After 35 years of marriage, their home had broke up. And it's still broke up tonight. On, it all started, Brother Dennis, with one decision. My cousin, some of my cousins don't even know what the power of God is. In one generation, we went from holiness, Pentecostal, fire baptized, Holy Ghost filled. In one generation, uh, I've got cousins that have been in the movies, uh, amen, that do commercials that play on Broadway, uh, but they have no idea what the power of God is. Uh, they have no idea what it is to feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, another one of my cousins married a wino. Uh, he shot and tried to kill her. Uh, he later died in a drunken car accident. Uh, oh, my, my, my. Uh, well, let's look 20 years down the road. Uh, let's look 25. Uh, Dad stayed in the old church. Uh, tonight he's got a son uh, that's preaching the gospel uh, and evangelizing uh, with a wife and three children. Uh, my other brother's here. Uh, my sister's here. Uh, we've pastored churches. Uh, we've seen souls saved. Uh, you've got to learn to look uh, down the road. Uh, you've got to learn to look uh, a little farther. What's it going to be like down the road? What will it be down the road? Come on. Well, I tell you, Brother Brent, I believe the Lord's going to come in time. I do too. What if He don't? What will become of your life? Are you living just for what satisfies me today? Or are you planning for the future? Brother Mark, you understand, 14, 15 years old, man, that life is forever. But tomorrow... You'll be married. Tomorrow, you'll be on your own. Tomorrow, Dad won't be making you go to church anymore. Tomorrow, Mom won't make you come to youth camp anymore. And then, my friend, you have planned for the future. Will you have looked a little farther? Or will you have got so caught up in right now that you forgot about tomorrow? Huh? Tonight, tonight in this altar service, we're fixing to make decisions that will affect us for eternity. We're fixing to look a little farther. You see, Brother Larry, it was only yesterday, it seems, that me and you was out here in the bunks and we was campers. We was making a mess and carrying on. We was in here feeling the presence of God and having a good time. Amen. Now we're not old, but we got wives and we got kids. I never believed in God here this quick. 
I just want to slow it all down. But instead of slowing down, it just seems to be speeding up. I'm glad. I'm glad that I looked a little farther. It was just yesterday, Brother Tim. You didn't have these big grown boys and kids. And you was up here being the judge of all the earth. Amen. And Sister Nancy Marlin was preaching to us. And you was a judge with the books were open in front of you. And I was here. Uh, and I was sitting where these kids are sitting. Just, it was just yesterday it seemed like. But now time has gone. Uh, oh, I'm glad that we looked a little farther. Uh, I'm glad we've got a good report tonight. Uh, that God's still moving. Uh, that we're not strung out on drugs. Uh, that we're not in hell. Uh, that the power of God is touching our lives. Uh, oh, you people. Uh, please listen to me tonight. Uh, please get up vision of eternity. Please open your eyes and look down the road. Don't get caught up in the well-watered plains. Lift your hands and worship God tonight. Let's worship God in here tonight. Oh, let's look a little farther. Let's look a little farther. Let's look a little farther. Let's stand all over the house tonight. Let's continue to ask God to have His way in this altar service tonight. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. song said where will you be a million years from now will you be happy will you be singing while ages roll throughout eternity I ask this question where will you be where will you be five years from now where will you be doing where will you be going my buddy's here tonight, Big Joe. We call him Tiny for short. Joe would come to this youth camp when he was a boy. And if Joe would let me say it without getting mad, and the way I tease him, you don't get mad, I know he'll take it. Joe was one of those boys that never did get real serious about it. There was a time or two he got in. For the most part, he was a big tough guy. Huh? And Joel went far from God. And Joel went through a lot of heartache. And Joel lost his wife in a car wreck. And Joel went through the very depths of hell. Because he sat in youth camp and didn't pay attention and thought it was funny. I'm glad that Joel's here tonight. I'm tickled that Joel's here. I'm glad he's not in hell. It's probably only because Granny Green prayed for him and Papa and Mama. But I'm going to tell you if I give Joel this mic tonight, he'd tell you, young people, look a little farther. Look a little farther. Boys, what will your lives be in five years? You come real close, son. You just told me for church. You come real close to being a little white marker alongside the road Christmas Eve, head-on collision. What, 16 years old, 17 at the time? He come real close. You were there last year, right? He come real close to carrying a picture in here and having a memorial service for this pal boy. Huh? What about next time? What about next year? What about next time around the block? Will God be merciful? It's not, it's not. When you left here last year, did you think that you'd almost die and face God and eternity? Did you even have a slightest thought? You didn't cross your, I preached it last year. I preached last year that the devil wanted to make somebody a white cross beside the road. I told you that last year. And right there he sits. And God had mercy. Now is this a game or is this for real? Look a little farther. Every head bowed, every eye closed while they begin to play something softly.
There used to be a big group of kids come up here from my law. There's still some coming, but I remember one year there was about 30 of them that come. Peter Lowline and Phil and Mikey and Demetrius and all these boys that we had such a good time with. Last year I got a hold of one of them and I pulled them aside. And I began to ask them, where's this one? Where's that one? I heard some good reports. One was preaching. One was pastoring. Then the bad news started coming. One of them was turned into a homosexual. One of them got a broken home. One of them far from God. One. So I found out that right at youth camp, decisions are made. Life will pass us by. Where will you be? As Sister Sarah begins to play.